This time I have pressed the live button, ladies and gentlemen. I make the mistake once or twice, but hey, you know what the flavor is. Welcome to tonight's live. To anyone new, my name is Tino. And we're going to be having a conversation tonight about a little story of mine. But first, a little bit of structure in tonight's live. We're going to dive into the charts first. We're going to break down what's been going on. More interest rates, huh? Pow. Suggesting too. In the meeting today, should I say, saying that the market has still got plenty of room to have more interest rate increases and the robust economy of the US and this labor market kicking ass continuously. Word on the street is saying that the market hasn't priced in what's going on in the world. Now let's bring in our gang of conspiracy theorists and let's go on the idea that everyone is rushing to sell. The market's climbing up. Yields are at 20-year highs. Like, what's going on? We've got more advancements in the Israel-Hamas war. Everyone's now starting to jump on the game. It's getting a little bit tricky, ladies and gentlemen. And you've heard me talking about it. All we need now is an oil field to get attacked. And apparently an oil field has been attacked. $100 a barrel? Well, that's going to be a bit difficult for power to maintain inflation now, isn't it? So, we're going to go into the charts. We're going to break everything down. Bitcoin, still holding out. Uh, yes, that's good news for us. But is Bitcoin like everything else? That's the problem. Once we're done with the charts, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be telling you a story about an experience where I genuinely thought I was going to die. So make sure you stick around for that bad boy. Let's get with the flavor. Cool. So what we got, Bitcoin still currently playing around this 28.6 zone, not really giving us any flavor. But first, let's have a look and see who made money today. Earlier on today, I shared a couple of projections. Now, these projections were based on the news announcements. We shared the Euro projection, we shared the Bitcoin projection. Let's do the Bitcoin projection first. So we anticipated Bitcoin to try and take out the 29,006 29, region. And unfortunately, we didn't get that. We only managed to get the good old 28,917. But the day is not done, ladies and gentlemen. There could be a little bit more room for Bitcoin to come into play. But we had built in the idea that they were going to come and attack this region from this update over here. Now, looking at the holding of the play in this area, you've got the rise, the retrace, the continuation. Notice how they tried to bring it back in towards the stop and volume region where what? Traders are trapped. Now, with that being said, we just need to go over to Euro for a split second. Now, I shared this projection on Euro with various targets. Now, the reason why I share it like this, because it's a news play. And when Euro is up against news, it usually brings... When they, when they pump price, you can see it straight away. There's not that much wicking when it comes to Euro, okay? Depending on the news, all right? Now, I had said that you maintain a long entry if Euro can break the 105.620. However, if Euro starts making a move to either zone, the setup is invalidated. Why? Because if Euro breaks the long entry zone right here, the news comes out, it could slump and drop to the downside. But I'd factored in a stop loss that you would need to put into play. Now, this is where you break the rules. Check what happened. Euro went on to clear the range. Now, I had suggested that you place a stop loss around the 105.467 region, which was right here. Okay. We go into the chart. It was actually 105.478. Now, had any of the members just said, you know what? I'm going for it. Had they did, if they did that and they set the stop loss, price didn't even go anywhere near it. Now, this was a little bit of a lucky thing because of the news, but you can see what happened with the news. It spiked up, it come back down. This is what happens when you break the rules. If you do break a rule, you've got to have a conviction. You've got to be understanding what's going on in the marketplace to get that you could be right. So we anticipated Euro to get towards a very significant zone, 106.024. They ended up taking the 106.168. Happy days to the guys that managed to exploit that. Oil, given that oil right now is causing a little bit of a problem, 
We had anticipated oil on what day was this? This was on the 16th. We expected oil to try and clear this range and get towards $89.06. Now, notice I said here that this would be a trend invalidation zone. Look at how surgical they were with oil today. Look at this. They made their way into oil. Now, this is classic, classic green vector candle continuation zone, okay? Current price of oil is 89. Well, it actually made a high of 89 and 55, okay? But look what they did here. They came back into the green vector candle region right here and found support. Funnily enough, the same spot that they found support the last time. So what was that telling me? It was telling me that they were building positions, preparing oil to go up. Now, with all the hype that's happening overseas, we're only expecting oil to surpass this $90 mark and keep going up. Look left and what do we have? We've got clues. We've got clues as to where they are likely to end up in the future, ladies and gentlemen, because it's now macro driven. There is a problem. We've got the idea that the Federal Reserve is now going to keep on increasing interest rates, which means that investors are going to have to do something about that. And holding on to equities ain't a good sign. How do we know that's not a good sign? Well, look at the NASDAQ today. NASDAQ has come back and fully recovered near enough the green vector candle region right here. You've had these setups. We've been monitoring this zone. It's no surprise, surprise, mother. You know? But before NASDAQ decided to make the move, I shared another trade setup just after the New York Live, where I anticipated that the NASDAQ was going to make a move back up. And this is what we have to understand about how the markets move. Take the video from last night that I did on how vector candles are formed. We anticipated they were going to come back up into the VWAPs. We expected them to do a reversal from this zone. I projected that I wanted the weekly low to be taken, but I started on the video saying that I might give a price projection that is a little bit too far, but I'm looking at the 14,800. And when we look at the NASDAQ, you can see what she did today. She came down all the way to 14,837. I will take that. Look what they did first. It was a tricky someday. And this was before Powell. And then Powell spoke and got everyone excited. But if you notice all the green vector candles that were appearing, they weren't finalizing at the highs until they initiated the control and ripped price to the downside to only bring it back into the green vector candle zone. What's next? We've got another interesting zone at the 14683. That is a point of interest. So we've got to be very cautious with that flavor. Okay. Going into Bitcoin, a lot of people are now looking at Bitcoin thinking, OK, maybe Bitcoin is getting ready to start making a nice little move to the upside. Yes, this is true. But we've got this wick over here that's causing a little bit of a problem. All right. Because this area here is where traders are currently trapped. Right. Check this out. XRP is up 6.2 percent and going. Now, this is the question. If. You are in longs on XRP. Please take some money off the table. We know XRP likes to do this. Is cryptocurrency giving us the heads up? Are they telling us that they're pumping it to sell with the anticipation of it coming down? Remember XRP's relationship with Roblox? They've just gone into partnership. Happy days. At the same time, we've had nearly 400 million XRP transferred to an exchange. Why? This would be a perfect time to get rid. Done. Think about it. It's been stacking and accumulating. They've recovered the, red, the, the green vector candle region. Happy days for XRP. Please take something. Okay? Set yourself a trailing stop and do something about it. Let it go up with your profit. And then make sure you're locking it in, ladies and gentlemen. All right? We've been here before. Now, I'm going to say it now. The war is where cryptocurrency can shine. That's the sad truth. Because if the marketplace is collapsing, okay, and investors, <laughs> investors are seeing the yields going down, and that means investors are trying to go to the bonds, but the bonds ain't even going anywhere. We've got a problem, guys. The 10-year, look at that. The 10-year is etching, it's going, and this is a problem, man. 
I'm telling you, we've got to be very, very careful. Okay, so those of you that are tied up in certain stocks and what have you, just make sure you're diversifying your portfolios by exploring assets that will go up on the back of war. That's the truth. Fortunately, this is the this is the name of the game. The volatility index is up 7%. Sorry, hold on a second. Did we just have the same chart up a minute ago? Or what was that? Oh, sorry, that was oil. Sorry, that was the VIX. Sorry, that's oil. That is the VIX. What are we seeing? We're seeing that now the volatility index is starting to climb. Now we go long. We go long when the volatility index gets to the extremes of 30 plus. Because then that's when the marketplaces, they can't handle it. Like, what's going on? The volatility index recently, when it was down here, okay, down at the 13 mark, investors and guys were like, look, man, we've been following this bad boy for the past 50 years and what have you, okay? It's, it's, <laughs> it's not doing anything. Is it, is it now going to be a FUD? Is it done and dusted? Now, all of a sudden, they're starting to come, you know, start using it and go back to the idea that maybe the volatility index is a good measure of investors' sentiment. So that means as it's going up, it implies that investors are starting to feel a little bit of a pain. Now, with the Fed today suggesting that more interest rates are coming into play and higher interest rates for longer periods of time, that means we're going to be going into seasonal earnings season recession. Okay? Don't know why I started off with seasonal. But earnings season recession means that companies are going to be declaring losses within the stock market. They call it an earnings recession, okay? But apparently the United States government is suggesting that the U.S. government has missed the recession. Everyone was projecting for it, but the economy's sound. Look, <laughs> what have you got? <laughs> Existing home sales came in higher. Where the f Where's the money, man? These figures must be inflated. But then let's back it up. A robust employment market. You've got a dropping manufacturing business. So if people are actually in work and people are claiming less benefit, that only means that even if the manufacturing sector is going down, the only thing that's opposite for them to do is to increase their costs, increase the, 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 the price of their goods or what they sell at, okay? That's the only next logical thing. So we've got ourselves some very interesting information coming out here, okay? Going back into Bitcoin for a split second, I'm not seeing the move yet on Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is actually moving down, and XRP is still maintaining its move to the upside. Please, ladies and gentlemen, take some money off the table if you are in longs on XRP. I'm going to warn you again and again and again because you don't want to be the guy that you slap across the face and say, man, I wish. Some Ray J business. You don't want to be doing Ray J as a stop loss. That is not your stop loss. Ray J is not your stop loss. If I had one wish and all that. Anyways, the interesting thing is, is that USDT market cap isn't really going down. XRP, USDT. Wait a second. Surely they're going to come back into the wick. Surely there's a psychological impact on the fact that investors swept up cryptocurrency at this point. But then again, this was BlackRock. This was the idea of the ETF. So they've already made one, two, three attempts towards that point and not actually succeeded it. So that could be very interesting. Going into the good old Ether. Good old Nas and Jay-Z battle. Ethereum hasn't really made a move. Okay. It's consolidating. With what's going on in the world, guys, you've got to be very careful with trading cryptocurrency or even holding cryptocurrency right now, all right? We would love it if cryptocurrency decided to just be the next best thing and start rolling to the upside. We would love to see the dollar dominance absolutely just take a shoe bag to the downside and completely clear the range. They're coming to the vector candle recovery region right here. Happy days, but now they've made it back into the zone. That's a problem for me. Look, we spoke about this earlier on today. Where is it? Where are you? Here we go. There's your Dixie. Vectors recovered. Vectors recovery requ required. 
Whenever you get vector candles that are already, already recovered and the way you identify vectors being already recovered, look closely. The candlesticks give you the clue. Look, pay close attention. Green vector candle, wick recovery. Green vector candle, wick recovery. Green vector candle, green recovery, um, the vector recovery, okay? When you see that happening, the business is done, okay? So inside of here, you've got red vector candles that are loading up to bring it back up again. Make sure you're focusing on that with today's strategy that I shared to you as well, okay? Keep that in mind. Tesla down 10%, narrowly missing the closing of the gap, at least 50%. Unbelievable. Sad day for crypto, no, for Tesla. Very sad day for Tesla. Okay? Going into gold, up 1.35%. It's consistent with them getting a little bit scared, but this is the hedge. They are selling into the traders who feel like now gold is a safe haven. Watch out for gold. We're going to see some very interesting play with gold. Because if they've hedged themselves against gold, then that only means gold is now going to get prepared for the next hedge. A nice little slap to the downside will be on the cards. But as long as this hammer story keeps on rolling and the idea of oil going up, commodities is where it's at. We spoke about it yesterday. So keep an eye out on gold, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Now, NVIDIA, currently... Gapping down at the close of the marketplace, all right? We've got this zone right here in the 800 EMA at $411 with another clear of a vector candle region right there. I'm expecting that to come into play. But more importantly, we need to be mindful that the NASDAQ and the S&P have taken a strong move to the downside, yet Bitcoin hasn't moved. That's a problem for me. Bitcoin hasn't gone anywhere. That's a big problem. Because if cryptocurrency does follow the marketplace, then naturally we're going to be expecting Bitcoin to come down. And like I said, we can't ignore this green vector candle down here at 27,449, okay? Are we cool with that chat? Yeah? Are we cool with that? And finally, USDJPY. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why they're holding USDJPY, guys. We've got problems. USDJPY goes to 150. They'll do another intervention out of the blue. <whistles> Slap back down, bring it back up. Be very careful with dollar yen. I'm telling you to be careful, but it's whether you do, do anything about it, you know? And that's 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 where we are at right now, ladies and gentlemen. You can see the market's pretty much done right now. It's pretty quiet. Markets are going to be closing. Well, the markets are closed. We are now in effectively the dead gap time, which leads me on to the following, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to learn more about the hybrid or you want anything to do with becoming a member, go check out the Traders Reality website. You'll be able to get daily trade setups from myself where we explore the Forex market, the commodities market, futures markets, whatever is developing, building. I'm going to give you guys that flavor from my point of view. Now, story. If you're ready for the story, let me know. I'm waiting. <laughs> Jokes aside. So the story starts off like this. How was it that I thought I was going to die? Well, let me give you a little bit of a background information. So my uncle, who is married to my dad's sister, he happens to be first cousins with the head of the Greek mafia, okay, in Cyprus. Now, the head has actually passed away, and my uncle is still going strong, 89 years of age, and he's killing it, okay? He's doing really good. Still smoking, still drinking the good old bells. Now, my grandmother, God rest her soul, happened to be best friends with the head of the Cypriot Mafia's wife. So you can understand that when it came to dinner parties, we were all there. And it doesn't matter who you were or where you were from. At the dinner table, it was Sweden. Neutral ground. Okay. Which leads me on to this story. Me and my cousin Cameron, right? We were getting ready to go to Cyprus. Now, I was pumped for this holiday. We were going to Ayanapa, all right? But we stayed in the local village, all right, in Larnaca. Now, as we're getting ready to go, you know, I'm getting all my stuff sorted out. We're going for the boys' holiday, yeah? You know what it's like when you're getting ready for a boys' holiday. I was about 18, 19 at the time. 
And I'm like, yeah, baby, let's get on with the game, man. We're going to go Napa. We're going to live it up. I had a Sony Handycam, and that's showing my age right now. Sony Handycam was the camera that had discs, used CD discs, mini M little discs like that to record. Now, believe it or not, I was vlogging without even knowing I was vlogging, okay? So I'd be, you know, take this camera, and I was recording everything. I'd even go to Napa on the nights out. I'd go with my cousin Cameron, walking around with this camera, and I was a cameraman. People were loving it. I'd go up to one guy, be like, yo, yo, say your name, man. We're just really video re um, recording this bad boy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these guys would join around. Yo, I'm Steve. I'm Mike. I'm all of this stuff. I went up to this lovely woman. I says to her, hey, tell me what's your name. Say, send some love to the camera. And she turns around and says, I have a horse. What the? F I have a horse. I asked your name. And I'm just on the camera. And you know what? I'm going to try and retrieve that data, man. I'm trying to get that camera to work again. I've got the discs. I just need to get a converter. And I'm going to slap it all up on YouTube for you guys to check out on how I sounded like a right little virgin at the age of 18, 19. But you know what? I was vlogging back then. And I didn't even know. Anyways. One night, me and my cousin Cameron were going to Napa. We're doing our thing. We're enjoying a couple of drinks and what have you. The night comes to an end and we're going back home to the village. And then we go back, go sleep. We wake up in the morning and we get a phone call. It was the old bird, my mother. She says, your uncle's coming over in the next 45 minutes to pick you up and take you for a meal. I was like, okay, cool. We'll get ready. Okay, cool. So... I'm getting ready, and my, my cousin Cameron, he's like, you know, well, what should I wear? I said, bro, what do you mean, what should you wear, man? You're going to the family dinner. What are you going to do? Try and move to your auntie or something. Just put something comfortable on you, man. It was hot enough as it is, and I was getting agitated. I don't like the heat. Anyways, he's getting ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, okay? So I go on the balcony, and I'm sat there with my Greek coffee, and I'm enjoying a nice little cigarette. And I'm sat back. Smoking, taking it all in. I'm expecting my uncle to turn up. Out of nowhere, I see this BMW, Ricky Ross, black on black, black rims, <laughs> black bodywork, black tinted windows. It was like it was like a Batman mobile. Like it was pitch black. Pulls up outside the house. I'm like, what is this? Who is this? Some dude gets out of the car, looks up to me and says, Tino? I was like, eh, yeah, can I help you? And I'm talking in Greek to this guy. And he goes, your uncle sent me. Ah, oh, okay, no worries, cool. Let's get the uncle, yo, yo, Cam, taxis arrive. Okay, cool, this guy's got a black BMW, black on black, like I said. I'm getting myself sorted out. Cameron's coming with me. Let's go. Get into the car. I sit at the front. I get that mad motion sickness. Can't stand being a passenger in a car. No chance. So, sat in the front. This guy. Happy-go-lucky guy. All right? Had this fat smile on his face. He was always like, hey, yeah. He was, it's like he was on edge all the time, but he was a cool guy. So I was like, yeah, man. So, we started the small talk. We're driving now. And we're going and, you know, who are you and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm your uncle's friend and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, your family and all. We were giving the small talk. Now, my cousin Cameron was at the back and he, he couldn't really speak proper Greek, like fluent as myself. So I'm getting in with the flow with this guy. And we're just talking away. How long have you been in Cyprus and all that stuff? I was born here. Cool. Who's your dad? You know my dad, you know. Anyways. We get to a petrol station. Okay. He pulls up. And he's like, give me five minutes. I'm just going to go into the petrol station. I was like, okay, cool. So I'm like sat there in the car. I'm like talking to Cameron. Like, yo, Cam, like, you know, this guy's all right, isn't he? Cam's like, I don't know, man. He's, he's a bit weird. Like, what do you mean weird, man? He's cool. Man. He, I wanted to light a cigarette. And I was like, yo, give me the lighter. And Cameron's like, I haven't got one. I said, what do you mean you haven't got one, bro? You're not helping me here. I want a lighter. Anyway, so you know what you normally do when you're in a car? You just like checking yourself and then you're like let me just check down at the side pockets of the car because my guy smoked anyway so i was like okay let me just have a little gander around the car and see if i can find something I'm gonna get a light or even matches couldn't find anything on the side down on the near the handbrake so i was like where's the glove compartment i press
pressed the glove compartment button and it dropped with such force. I was like, what on earth is that? Ladies and gentlemen, to my surprise, nine millimeter Beretta pops out. I thought, what the f I said, Cam, Cam, look at this, look at this shit right here. My guy's got a gun in his car, bruv. Cameron lost it, sat back. Now Cameron's kind of tanned like me. He wasn't tanned anymore. This guy was pulling some Casper the friendly ghost. He shit it. And I was like, what am I gonna do? No, is it loaded? I don't know. What's it doing there? Who is this guy? My mom told me it was my uncle that was picking me up. Like, who is this guy? He starts coming. Now, the one opportunity I had to do something about it and like get on the blower to my mother and be like, we're with this guy who's got a gun. He come, I just quickly slammed the glove compartment box. I just sat still right there and the guy gets into the car. I'm like, oh my God, man, I've just wasted my opportunity. Cameron's now at the back, sat there thinking, oh my days, who is this guy? He gets back in the car and he's like, you right, boys? I'm Greek now. I'm like, yeah, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. Have you got a lighter? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, trying to light a cigarette right now. I'm thinking, what am I doing? Anyways, he starts driving. Now you can imagine what's going on in my mind right now. Is the gun loaded? Why is there a gun in there in the first place? How am I in this car? What's the story, Tino? How'd you end up from being in Ayanapa recording people, asking them their name, and they're telling you that you, they've got a horse? You're living a great life right now. You're young. You're going to explore him. How are you in a car blacked out with this guy? You don't know. And he's got a Beretta in his glove compartment. My life was like, I was, I was just thinking about everything. So I'm starting to navigate my surroundings like, should I just jump out? What about Cameron? What's he going to do? <laughs> That'll be pretty sad. I could duck because I'm bold like that. I will jump out of a car that's moving. I'm, I had no hesitation because the way I see it, that Beretta that was there has an intention. And in Cyprus, there's only one reason you're holding that and it's not to let traffic pass, right? We're driving down the roads in Cyprus. Now, at that time, Cyprus wasn't as developed, all right? You wouldn't even know if you were driving on the road or the pavement, okay? And it got to the point where if you were driving on the pavement, you were telling people to get out of the way. That's the sort of thing that was happening in Cyprus back then. So we're driving now down this motorway. And I'm like, how long we got, bro? Like, where's my uncle's house? He goes, don't worry. We're going to get there. When he said, don't worry, we're going to get there, I'm, I'm analysing everything he's saying. I'm trying to premeditate. Well, what could he be preparing for? Now, when you're driving down Cyprus, you're either driving through a mountain, over a mountain, round a mountain, or behind a mountain. So we're driving now between two mountains. Now, back in the day, the farmers used to use the old farmer routes so they could move their cattle. Now, they obviously went and built all these roads on top of these routes, but some of those routes were still accessible. We're driving down this road, and then my guy decides to take a sharp turn into this slip road. Ah, shit. I thought, that's it. It's done. This guy ain't taking us to no dinner party. Why are you not on the main road? Why do you need to go down here? And me being me, you know, with the chat. I was like, oh, where are we going, bro? Like, what's this route all about? He goes, don't worry, we just need to stop off somewhere. Done, that's it. So I was getting closer and closer to the conviction that this guy with his Beretta is about to wipe me and my cousin Cameron. We're driving now, the road is doing this stuff, right? And the car's getting bouncy. Cameron is all flopping, he's all sweating out. And he's like, I can't take it. And he kept mumbling under his breath. He was like, we're gonna die man we're gonna die and i started losing my shit i started going like you know you know jump jump around let's let's jump out and let's let's jump out of the car like making out as if i'm singing kind of thing to get a message over to cameron to make sure that he's gonna make a move when i make a move and the guy says to me in greek why are you gonna jump out of the car bro why do you keep saying jump 
This was a happy-go-lucky guy. Then all of a sudden, this guy's tone changed. I'm not liking the situation, ladies and gentlemen. We're still on this rocky road right now, and the mountain is over here, okay? The main road was on that side. And I'm like, whoa, we, 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 this is it now. I'm done. 19, that's it. My life's over. Beretta's there. I started thinking things. Maybe if I just quickly open the glove compartment, pull it out, and then... And hold with him. And I'm like, what the f what are you doing, man? Why, why are you taking us out on these direct routes and scary roads, man? These old farmer routes. What's wrong with you? He stops the car. And I was like, right, this is my cue. This, this, this is the time for me to make the move. Okay? He goes in out of the car. He says, two minutes. Goes into the car. Goes out. Goes to the back of the car. Pops the bonnet. The boot, sorry. Okay, I'm saying to Cameron, bro, what am I going to do, man? He goes, just pull it out of the glove compartment, just do something. I says, what? And then it comes back to me that, you know, he, he's a relative or something. I can't do that, man. And he's like, just do something. I, says, I ain't doing nothing, man. How about you sit in the front next to him? I don't know what he's like. Go bite my neck. I don't know what this guy's going to do. I just don't let him get near it. I says, yeah, but that's not my problem. What if he's already got one on him? What if that's just a backup plan? So we were going through madness right now. He comes back, sits in the car. He's got a bottle of water. What are you doing? Like he's asking me, do you want some? I says, no, 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 I'm good. Uh, and where, where, where's the house? Oh, he goes, oh, come and have a look. What, get out? Yeah, yeah, get out, go and have a look. So I get out of the car. Cameron gets out of the car. I look at Cameron. Cameron looks at me. And we're like, should we do one? And by the time we came to that realization, he goes, that's your uncle's house down there. So the next question was, so what the, what are we doing up here? I just wanted to, I wanted to show you the scenic route. Ah, oh, okay. Thank you, my bro. Can we get down to the house now? Now, he obviously sensed that something was up with us because I was agitated. I was puffing away on the cigarettes. And Cameron, again, this guy was Casper, the friendly ghost. But <laughs> he was done. This guy now turned to a halogen light. He was white. We get back in the car. He starts driving. We managed to get onto the main road. Thank God for that. People. Now we're driving and driving. And we start driving around these corners and bends. And we're getting into a local village. I'm like, okay, we're good now. We're good. Okay, we've still got the Beretta in the front. Are we going to this house? We're cutting through a few more villages, and then bang, we pull up to my uncle's house. I was like, okay, I recognize this place. Now I quickly get out of the car. Cameron jumps out of the car. We rush straight through, and this guy is just like closing his door, walking like normal. And we see everyone sat down at the dinner table. I was like, hello, everyone. And they were like, you all right? I was like, yeah, I, I'm okay. And why, why does Cameron, like, what's, up, what's up with you guys? And I was like, do we know this guy? What, what, George? Yeah, George, yeah. Do we know him? Yeah, he's so-and-so's. Guy. Guy. What do you mean, guy? What what does guy do? He just fixes things. Oh, he's a fixer. Yeah. You put me in a car with a fixer. Did you not think to tell me you were going to have me picked up by a fixer? Who happens to have a 9mm Beretta in his glove compartment smiling every five minutes to me, taking me down a scenic route, making me think I'm going to get killed and buried, casino style. Did that, like, what were you trying to achieve? This guy, George, was laughing his head off. He goes, bruv, your face. You both were shitting it. It was the fun. I couldn't help myself. When I got out of the car to go to the boot, I was Dying with laughter because I knew you guys thought I was going to wipe you out. He goes, that Beretta is loaded. And I was concerned if you were going to do something bold. 
And that's when I would have come out and said, look, hands up, it's a joke. We're pranking you kind of thing. That was my experience with one of Cyprus's fixers who gets things done, but the powers that be. Now, when you get into those situations, ladies and gentlemen, what do you do? Like, please share your thoughts. The last time you were just in a car when you thought you were going to get picked up and taken to a family dinner and you've got this nut job looking brer who's got a Beretta in his car, black on black, BMW. What are you going to think, man? It's not something you're going to take lightly now, is it? I guess the moral of the story is, ladies and gentlemen, always check the glove compartment. Mad love and respect. Peace.